<laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Scott Taylor, this is John Mackey, and this is The Huddle. Manitoba's football show brought to you by Football Manitoba every week here on Shaw TV. And John, we had an absolutely tremendous blue and gold classic. Um, the 27th annual might have been the best of the bunch. East Side Eagles Field, here in the far east side of Winnipeg. But you were at the game, you were at both games today. It was tremendous football. I had a great time. I think the uh, Blue and Gold Classic this year was a blast. Uh, you know, great honorary coaches. Buck Pierce was out here. You know, Marcellus Bowman, uh, Kelly Butler, and oh, it was Brett it was McNeil a great time. was here. Brett yeah, we, we had a great oh, it was, crew. It was a great time, and I and think the, the football kids, was phenomenal. It's always, it always is. Always. Is. Those kids can really play. And one of the kids we got to talk to right after the game was my favorite player in the game, linebacker for Team Gold, Chris Pereira. Let's go talk to Chris. Clearly, the best defensive player on the field all day was Chris Pereira of Team Gold. You had a tremendous football game today. Chris, tell us how you got started playing football and uh, how much effort you put into it now. Uh, I started in grade seven with the Crestwood Grizzlies. I worked up to St. Paul's High School, started doubling in grade 9, I played doubling in grade 10. Uh, I do a lot of training, working out, just want to be the best I can be. You obviously love to play, just watching you on the field, it looks like there's a lot of joy when you play football. Yeah, I love it. What do you like best to play? I like to hit. I love that, to hit. The adrenaline rush from hitting. Now, now, most kids, or not all kids, get that feeling. But obviously, you're a guy who wants to be a football player. Yeah. Now, are you big enough? Uh, I feel like I'm not tall enough, but I feel like with hard work and a lot of a lot of training and stuff, I could be the best I can be. Now, you're doing more training than just in school, aren't you? Pardon me? You're doing more training than just in school. You're doing some training outside oh, yeah, I'm of doing, school as well. I do training outside uh, with McDowell's performance. Yeah. So, how many hours a week would you put in on football? Uh, with football? about seven. So usually Plus hour, practice. Plus practice, yeah. Plus practice. Now, playing in the St. Paul's program, you got to be a pretty good football player to start. Yeah, you do. Because that is good football. Yeah, it's very good football. Tell us about your coaching there and, 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 the, and the kind of leadership you get playing at St. Paul's. Uh, the coaching there is very good. Uh, they teach you how to be a leader, how to be a man for others. It's really good football there. A lot of technique. So now with this provincial program, um, it looks like you're probably you earned yourself a spot on the provincial team. You got to be pretty proud of yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. So you go to London, Ontario. Is it uh, your first time in London, Ontario? Uh, I've never been there. So it'll be an opportunity to, to be seen by a lot of people in football. Yeah. Give you a chance to play. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chris. No Chris Pereira, the best defensive player in the game in the blue and gold game, and uh, we'll be back right after this. You know, the 27th annual Blue and Gold Classic was about as much fun as any human being should be allowed to have. But we had even more fun after the game was over. As a matter of fact, we sat down with Matt Sheridan, who was my color commentator on Shaw, along with four of the best players from that St. Paul's Crusaders team that played in this football game. Now, they didn't all play for the same team, so we had ourselves a lot of fun. This is eh, not really an interview, just a little after the game session with uh, Blair Mattis, the running back, Jamie Jakovich, the quarterback, Tristan Dice, the wide receiver and the linebacker who played on team gold not on team blue with the other guys Jeremy Drew and let's have a look okay I'm gonna call the roll just so we make sure we got everybody right um, raise your hands when I call your name Blair Mattis running back yes, sir. this is the st. Paul's crew of course in the middle is Matt Sheridan um, who was the uh, color commentator on our on our game on Saturday and also um, is a strength and conditioning coach at Explode Correct. and has just done a tremendous job with all of the kids. Um, Jamie Jakovich, we know he's here, yeah. We know his dad pretty well from uh, years ago. Uh, speaking of knowing dads, uh, Tristan Dice is here. Tristan with his uh, Houston Rockets hat. Or no, it's Houston, Texas. It's his football hat. Um, and Jeremy Druin, linebacker, is also here. And so we've got we got uh, running back, quarterback, wide receiver, and linebacker. That's yeah. a pretty good crew. We got all the smart guys here and one old <laughs> offensive lineman. <line. laughs> Odd man out. You guys all played pretty well today, especially the guy who wore the gold uniform. <laughs> the team gold guy had a pretty good game. Tell us what you did on defense to shut your friends down. I know the strategies. <laughs> I've been playing with him for ages. So we dialed a bit. Eh? He, he comes through that hole, and I just 
opens up, I'm sitting there waiting for him. That's all it that's So all you knew up. he was coming. I knew he was coming. <laughs> His eyes open. So Jamie, fun. was it that was it that difficult to to play against this uh, team goal defense? Because the, the boy, they played pretty well. The defense well. was great. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to give props to my O line though. They played way better than I thought. They were. <laughs> that's a good quarterback <laughs> right there. The man who knows what side his bread is buttered on. <laughs> Tristan, you're an awful tiny guy to be playing wide receiver. You nearly got killed oh, about three times oh, up there, but a great catch at the end, a tremendous hey, catch. Hey, baby dice right here. <laughs> baby dice, you played a great game today. Um, for people who don't play football and certainly don't play receiver, tell us how much fun or not fun it is to run over the middle and take a pass. Because linebackers are scary human beings. Well, running, I guess running across the middle, you don't get to do it that often. and. You have to trust that your quarterback's going to throw you, that you're not going to get lit up. I'm not so lucky. You know? he's, he's done it to me once. It was probably the biggest hit I've ever taken, but I trust him now, so it's all good. That was a great catch at the end of the football game. Um, I, I want to know, what, what are your plans? Um, you guys aren't going to stop playing football at the end of high school, so let's start with Blair. What do you want to do when you're done? Uh, hopefully, I, continue, I, I, I can continue football uh, wherever, uh, which any, uh, whichever university uh, would like me there. So, and just pretty much go from there. Uh, hopefully, getting educa uh, education comes with football. So, see what you can do. Jamie, they say that the, the most dead end job in Canadian football is a Canadian quarterback because you're a big star in college, <laughs> like my co host on the show, John Mackey. And then when it's over, it's over. Well, but are, are you going to play quarterback? Are you um, going to try to play another position? That's a, that's a goal. I'm going for quarterback you know I, 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 I punt for st paul's and stuff so that's always an option but we're well bob cameron yeah we're focusing, there you go. We're focusing on quarterback first though focusing on quarterback tristan uh i hope on you're gonna uh, be a coach like i hope on, yeah i hope on continuing <laughs> playing football i hope join I hope the rider get, crew i get an opportunity <laughs> to uh go to college somewhere and then yeah like whatever comes to me okay. uh, i want i have coach. a question though i have a question for okay. tristan if you had to choose between U of M or University of Regina, uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you had to choose. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a really tough. One. No comment. No comment. That's the diplomatic. For those who don't know out there, Coach Dice is the uh, coordinator at, uh, at with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Now, my linebacker, what do you want to do with your football career? Oh, uh, hopefully I get a scholarship somewhere, somewhere that takes me to a school that offers aviation, and then go from Wonderful. there. The you look like a guy who'd be a pilot. Yeah. You do. Be a sweet pilot. You'd be a sweet pilot. <laughs> I'd be a sweet, sweet pilot. pilot. But if I mean, if the career takes me past the uh, university, I'll play for as long as I can. Tremendous. You guys are great today. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Uh, we'll do it one more time. Blair Mattis, Matt Sheridan, uh, Jamie Jakovich, Tristan Dice, and uh, Jeremy Duran, who played just a great game today. Everybody was great today, and thanks so much, Thank and you. congratulations on, um, I suspect, making Team Manitoba and heading off to London. Let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope so. Way to go, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We had a lot of fun here at Eastside Eagles Field, one of the great football facilities in our province, and the Blue and Gold Classic was exceptional. One of the honorary coaches is former Blue Bomber offensive lineman and former NFL player Kelly Butler. We had an opportunity to talk to Kelly about what he was doing in football and what he's doing now at CDI College right after the game. Kelly Butler is my guest, but he's standing below me in the bleachers and I'm above him. And now I can look him right in the eye. Any this way, is terrific. Any way you can find an advantage, you know? <laughs> any way I can get any kind of an advantage, especially with a guy who played for my favorite football team. You were a Detroit Lion. Yes, I was. Take a minute and tell me what life is like in the National Football League. Uh, it was just a, a, a childhood dream. I can myself coming out here playing in all-star games and just having ambitions to go out there and play at the collegiate and professional level. And being able to play from my, from my home state, it was phenomenal. Was... People who will never get to the NFL, never understand the NFL, um, just see it from afar. Is it as big and exceptional and as wonderful as people think it is? Or is it, for a guy who's in it, just another day at work? It's even better. I mean, is it, it really? It's yeah. even better. It's one of those things that it's just living a dream and going out there and just you're you're a grown man playing a kids game. And it's just when it when it's over, it's over. But you just enjoy the memories. I mean, it's it, it, that's what it's about. It's about having the camaraderie with your teammates, going out there, being able to be a leader for those uh, young kids right there, and just setting the table and pushing it forward. That's why alumni are so big, uh, important because they give back and show them how, how it's supposed to be done. That was the one thing I wanted to ask you is, is, is the camaraderie. Wayne Gretzky always said the reason he could never give up playing hockey was because he missed the locker room. 
In football, I would imagine it's exactly the same thing. The one thing you don't want to do is, is miss the guys. You, you know, and, and even playing as an offensive lineman, that's where you're going to have your tightest bond because you're not going to be able to go out there and get much recognition unless you do something wrong. But you have five guys, whoever's on the offensive line, you're always together. You're always working as a one unit right there. So that's the kind of the, the locker room, the pranks, going out, spending time in people's houses, getting to know the families. That's the part that you, I, I'll miss. Is, I mean, and not the bumps and the bruises, but being able to go to war with the guys and just spending time and talking. They bring so many personalities. You get a chance to meet those families, and that's why sometimes people stay in the city they're at. They go out there and build those that those relationships and have those lifelong bonds. It's unfortunate people have to go home as far as even the CFL. You build a, 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 well, well, that's what you've done here in Winnipeg. Right. You played for the Bombers, and you had an opportunity to stay, mm -hmm. be the director of admissions at CDI College, and work with some great people there. Um, it, it's kind of worked out pretty well for you. I've been very lucky. I've been very fortunate right now. I had an opportunity to go to CDI uh, with Todd Lee and that whole thing and change people's lives through education, which is is truly important, but understanding that it was a life decision Rob? that football uh, was coming to a close room, as at least my, my journey was, and being able to be relevant and be part of the community and coach people and help people. And but you got became part of the community while you played for the Blue Bombers. I mean, you were more than just a football player here. Everybody knew you. That was what's most important. Sometimes you, one doesn't go without the other. You have to go out there and get actively involved and be a positive role model and try and get back to something, giving those kids and embrace them. As the community embraces you, you want to embrace the community and go out there and give your time and help these guys. Because at the end, when football comes over and you're looking for employment and you want to go out there and just be relevant or whatever, if you haven't gone out there and devoted your time while you're playing, why is somebody going to invest in you when you're done playing? So you got to give it. You were in a wonderful situation, though. You knew Talese to run CDI College. Right. Um, the, the Bombers had released you. I'm sure another team in the CFL might have given you another look, but an opportunity presented itself, and there you were. Well, it wasn't released. Retired. Well, that's right. Okay. But, but <laughs> you know the situation that, that you were in. I was in a position right there that I had to make a decision. Did I, I mean, if I played football, did I go out there and play for four years and reach my potential as far as get my pension? Yes. Did I go out there and have a lot of great memories? Yes, I did. And do I want new challenges and help change people's lives and coach people and go out there and help them? So that's where I presented myself. A, am I still coaching right now? Yes, I'm giving back, helping the St. Paul's. And B, am I changing people's lives right now and helping people in the real world as far as going out there, students who want to make changes, people who want to make changes. So everything I've learned from football has gotten me ready to go out there and prepare for my new career. Your new career is tremendous, and you were great today as an honorary coach with uh, with the Blue and Gold Classic, and thank you very much for doing that. It's always a pleasure, and it's truly a pleasure to come out here and see the, uh, the future of tomorrow right there. These young kids playing well and being excited. It's just, as once again, the camaraderie and developing that bond right there because this is a great thing for these guys. It's an accomplishment for them, and then setting the way where they know if they exceed those levels and make it, that they got to come back. And that's when you, you want to ingrain that and plant that seed in these children at a young age so when they become older and they understand that it was done for me, so now I got to do it for somebody else. That's the great thing about football in Manitoba, the people you beat. Kelly Butler, thanks so much. I was blessed. You looked solid. <laughs> Now, while we were doing the broadcast on Saturday afternoon of the 27th Annual Blue and Gold Classic, the under-18 game uh, was more than just a football game. There was an assessment going on. The 60 best players are going to be taken to a final camp, and 40 of those players are going to be in Team Manitoba when they head to London, Ontario this summer for the National Championship. So we wouldn't have done anybody any favors if we didn't talk to the man who has to make the final assessment, the head coach of the under-18 program for football Manitoba, Coach Rob Bailey. We know how coaches think. Coaches want to win football games. We know how players think they want to win football games. But as the core coach of the under-18 program in Manitoba, Rob Bailey had a bit of a different job today. He's looking for the players who are going to make Team Manitoba. Who did you see that you liked? Well, there's a number of players uh, that stand out. Uh, Jaden McC uh, McCoy as a, a returner in particular, but also uh, as, a, as a receiver. Uh, certainly our, our game MVP, Victor, uh, had himself a heck of a game. Uh, he's one of those kids that we've been we've been watching in high school this past season and realized he had talent, but he really stepped up today. Certainly, defensive line from a defensive line perspective, uh, we're a little bit smaller than we were last year, and uh, to some degree, size is important at the D line position. But we showed ourselves to be very athletic today and got upfield. And our offensive line is uh, certainly very talented and. Uh, our offense is starting to come together as a group, which I think is as important as, as noting individual efforts. Uh, as a team, we've gotten better and uh, we're, we're progressing along the path that we need to to be successful when we, when we get to July and we're, we're in Ontario. Um, 
I don't remember this many great young backs in the province all at the same time. Um, you, you had St. Pierre, who was one of the, who was the MVP of the game. Um, you had uh, a, a Big Optimus Prime, who was mm -hmm. outstanding. Um, Blair Mattis, one of the best running backs in the, in the province, wasn't the star of the game. I mean, it was one of those games where Mike Rashot comes out, a, a little running back, and, mm -hmm. and tears it up. Um, you've got to be pleased with where you are at running back. Very pleased. The, the depth uh, that we have this year is phenomenal. And each of them brings a little something different to the plate. Uh, young Mr. Breslin, you know, uh, a smaller 170-pound back, but uh, very hard to hit. Made people miss in the hole. Got himself some extra yardage because he good vision and and uh, and able to able to cut. You know, lots of. You had a lot of receivers out there too. There's lots of guys who can catch the football, and a lot of guys who caught it in traffic today. Yes, kids that aren't scared to go up and get the ball. You know, we use the term ball hawk a lot of times when we talk about receivers and uh, and defensive backs. And we uh, we had kids go up and take the ball away from defensive backs today, which is what we need to see. We're not uh, a tall physical receiving core were a very quick receiving core very athletic and and the fact that these kids were exactly willing to sacrifice themselves in traffic and go up after the ball tells us a lot it tells us a lot about their attitude and, and their demeanor and it's it's going to be an important element as we move on the decision will be made over the, over the next week we have a planned meeting next weekend where we'll finalize our our decisions We'll meet it. We'll look at the film individually. We have we have film that was taken from the sideline and from the end zone, which will allow us to evaluate uh, the offensive, defensive linemen and linebackers from the end zone and and the overall play from the sideline. We need to evaluate that individually. So we'll, each position coach will look at that. Then we'll meet as a, an offensive, defensive staff, and then we'll meet as a team because some of the some of the decisions have to be made relative to special teams players. So they won't belong to a specific gr position group. They'll be our special teams athletes, and so we'll meet as an overall team and make the final decision. Overall numbers, somewhere between 55 and 60. We don't want to say a hard number, but we don't want over 60 because you begin to water down the, the next process. If you have too many players to evaluate, 55 is a good number. How many are you taking to London? To London, 40. That's so it's going to be tough? It is. And you know, when we look at this process, 40 kids to, to uh, uh, let go from this, this part of the program to wean down to 60, and then we'll have to let another 20 or so players go at the next phase. So it's very difficult. You want to make the right decisions for the athletes, for the coaching staff, and ultimately for the program. Our emphasis, unlike the under-16 program that played this morning, our emphasis is on winning gold medals, right. representing our province and becoming national champions. Along the way, we're going to develop the athletes. We're going to give them opportunities to showcase their talents and improve their, their skill and ability. But the, the key... The key point of this is winning gold medals and being national champions, and that's got to be our goal. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Coach Rob Bailey. Thanks. You've already met Matt Sheridan a couple of times. He was the color commentator on our broadcast on Shaw TV for the 27th Annual Blue and Gold Classic. Matt Sheridan also participated in our little St. Paul's Crusader um, question and answer period. But we also wanted to talk to Matt about his days as a member of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, but more importantly, what he's doing now with strength and conditioning of athletes right here in Winnipeg. It's not as windy as it was earlier in the day, and I've got Matt Sheridan with me, who would block the wind for me anyway. Um, one of the biggest guys I know, former offensive lineman with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and now a strength and conditioning coach. Matt, tell everybody what you're doing these days. Uh, I work at McDowell's Gym on Stradbrook. We have a program there called Explode Football, uh, run by a former Bison teammate of mine, Dave Beakley, and uh, Chris McDowell, a former basketball player from the Bisons. And uh, I'm helping them out doing their strength and conditioning for the football athletes. And and uh, quite a number of the guys that I work with a couple of times a week playing in the game time. And you were pretty proud of the way your players play? Absolutely. Uh, and this is something we had touched on earlier. Uh, the evolution of sports, strength and conditioning is now almost a requisite. Um, used to be just for football players and contact sports, but everybody does it now. And uh, you know, it's becoming widely recognized as an absolute necessity if you want to be competitive and you want to get better. Now, when, when you talk about a session with you, what's a young kid going to do um, that's got some football experience? We're not talking about a greenhorn, a guy who's never really done this before. But a guy who's a pretty good football player he says, I, I want to sign up, I want to do this. What would you do with him to make him better? Well, one of the things we do is we, we haven't yet, and we will get to it, but we don't do a whole lot of sports-specific stuff. We concentrate on strength and conditioning. So we're in the weight room, we're teaching you proper technique, we're teaching you a little bit of theory, some of the fundamentals behind 
how your body works, what you have to do to, in order to get it bigger, stronger, faster, uh, the conditioning aspect of it, you know, as it relates to football, it doesn't do you any good if you're a great player only in the first quarter. You got to make it all the way to the fourth and then overtime on top of that. So all of these things are just pieces of the puzzle when it comes to being a great athlete at your chosen sport. It is interesting that, that people who, who have won championships will often say first that hard work beats talent. And I suspect that that's what you're trying to ingrain into your athletes. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, unfulfilled potential is a cliche, you know, and uh, you know, there's a, a, a saying up at one of uh, the places I used to train. Uh, the only things that really are persistent, uh, sorry, the saying is persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. So I mean, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't apply it, you don't do the work that is necessary to, to develop it and fulfill that, and at your um, strength and conditioning uh, programs, kids are going to learn that there is more to it and that they have to be persistent. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, that's one of the things that Explode has. Uh, the guys that work there, they have experience, they have, uh, they have credentials, and you know, all of us have played at a higher level, and uh, we can relate to the kids, and you know, we just have a good time. We hang out at the gym, we train for a couple hours, and hopefully they go home, they're tired, mom and dad are happy, and... Matt, I think they're going to cut the... Uh, they're cutting the, the turf! The artificial turf. They decided to cut the artificial turf. You and I are done. Thanks so much. Thank you. It was Pleasure. great doing the game. Matt Sheridan, my color commentator on uh, the uh, Blue and Gold Classic today, and uh, uh, just uh, a great coach and a former great player, and probably could still be a great, great player if you wanted to be. Thanks, Matt. Matty, thanks a lot. Buddy. Thank you. Take care. Well, that'll about do it. Matt Sheridan's a cool guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's great. Isn't he fun? Yeah, he's large, awesome. large man yeah. and a very strong man. And he was a great commentator today on yeah. Shaw TV. Yeah, he sure so, was. Matt Sheridan, thank you very, very much for that. John, we've got a lot of football coming up. It's, it's not even football season, it's May. And yet, there's so much football going on. These shows, I don't know what we're going to do. We, we're just going to pack it in with, with all of these athletes, all of these great coaches. The huddle is going to be a great, great year. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is, this was, the first edition of The Huddle with Scott Taylor and John Mackey on Shaw TV. Join us next week. Bye, everybody.